Welcome to the International Folk Art Markets Mentor to Market Online Education Program. This program is designed for artists participating in the Santa Fe market for the first time. Its goal is to provide useful information to help you be successful and feel more confident at your first market. In this presentation, we will discuss how to plan for your booth display. How you display your artwork in your booth is important for several reasons. First, a good booth display com communicates your story and the beauty of your artwork. Secondly, it can highlight the uniqueness and quality of your wor work. Third, an effective booth display is important because it makes it easy for buyers to see, touch, select, and buy your products. A well-planned and organized booth can increase sales. An attractive and effective booth display is an essential part of being successful at the Santa Fe market. So everyone starts with the same booth package. Your booth is approximately three meters wide, or about 10 feet, and three meters deep. It includes one table, one tablecloth, two chairs, and one wastebasket. Keep in mind that the size and the exact number of tables, tablecloths might change from year to year. Please note also that you can request additional tables, chairs, a mirror, a garment rack, jewelry cases, and dress forms for I from IFAM if you need them. Please contact IFAM as soon as possible to arrange the rental of these additional items. IFAM provides each booth with its own box of booth supply, supplies. This box contains a calculator, scissors, scotch tape, pens, staple and staplers, Ziploc bags, flashlights, pens, price labels, paper clips, string tags and safety pins. These will help you for both your display and for selling. Additional supplies are available through the booth display coordinator and with the handyman. They include things like push pins or thumbtacks, string and twine, a sewing kit, nails and screws, a staple gun. The handyman can also be helped available to help you construct things or do use tools. Now that we've reviewed the basics of what will you, you will receive in terms of booth and supplies, let's talk about how to plan your booth display. The first step is to create a map to determine the location of tables and how visitors will walk through your booth. Here are a few different table configurations from past booths in Santa Fe. Please note that for some years, there may be a restriction on how many tables you can use. These booths show three or four tables per booth. Some years you may be only limited to using two tables. Please check with IFAM to see what the table max is for this year. As you're creating your map, think about how customers will enter your booth. You want to make sure you create an easy way for them to enter your booth, allow space for them to walk around and see and touch all the products, and make sure there is space for multiple people. Here is an example of a very open and inviting booth where it would be very easy for customers to enter in the booth and see and touch all of the products. Create a path so that customers can see and touch as many things as possible. Here is a booth that placed a table in the middle in order to display more products and allow a clear path for customers to walk around the booth. If you have a corner booth like the one shown here, you can use a table to create an extra display area 
where customers can see products from both sides of the table, such as this table in the forefront of the photo. The second step in planning your booth display is to identify your statement pieces. What pieces or collections best represent you as an artist? What items best tell your story? This could be a single item or a collection of multiple items. You might also think about what pieces attract the most attention from customers. These are the items you will want to place in a location so they get the most attention and are very visible. Here is an example of an artist that used a piece of tapa cloth or bark cloth as their signature piece on the back wall of their booth. This piece represents symbols, colors, and motifs seen in their artwork. Most of their products are made of other materials, but this top of cloth is representative of their culture and identity, and therefore it's an excellent statement piece. Here is an example of a very large statement piece, significantly larger than any other piece in their booth. The scale and size of this piece draws buyers into the booth and quickly represents the quality and distinct style of their work. As you are thinking about your signature piece and where to place it in your booth, keep in mind that most visitors will see the middle back of your booth first. Also keep in mind that their line of sight is from their waist to the top of their head. So don't put important products on the floor or down low. Also think about drawing people into your booth by placing larger signature pieces in the back of your booth and smaller items towards the front. Once you've mapped out your tables, identified your signature piece, the next step Step three is to organize your products into groupings. Group products with common features together. This could be color, function, size, techniques, or materials. This makes it easier for customers to select products to purchase because they have all the choices in one place. Here is an example of products grouped together by function necklaces in one area, bracelets in another. Here is an example of organizing products by color. And here is an example of organizing products by collections. We see small bowls, large bowls, statues, etc. And here's an example of organizing products by size, small baskets in the front, tall ones in the back, and large ones on the floor. Now it's time to put it all together and set up your booth. Start with the back wall and create a statement about you and your products through a combination of products, your signature pieces, <clears throat> or signs and images. In this booth, the artist created a statement wall by draping a selection of scarves that show the full range of indigo colors he achieves in his collection. This will help artists, this will help customers understand sort of the full range of color and pattern that this artist offers. Here is El Haji, who we talked about in the earlier customer video. He uses a banner sign with images of where he is from on his black wall. This gives customers a sense of the origin of his work and where he is from. Create a variety of heights in your display. This helps customers see your products. You can shoot, use shelves, boxes, props, or even stack your products. Here are some shelves shown in the back that this artist used by creating, created out of pieces of wood and bricks. Shelves do not need to be fancy. Here's a folding bookshelf. 
here are some shelves that this artist purchased at a local store in Santa Fe to create multiple heights. Here is a folding bookshelf that this artist used to display their carved boards and create a statement display in the back of their booth. Here, an artist covered some of their shipping boxes with the tablecloth to create a riser to showcase their baskets. And here, artists are stacking their products to create different heights in their booth. And here, artists stacked their products on the ground to raise them up to be easier to see at eye level. If you are hanging products on the wall, think about what color you are using as the background. Note that the wall in, the, in your iFam booth, the wall color is white. So if you want a contrast color, be sure to bring a textile or another way to cover the wall to create a color. Choose a color that provides enough contrast to your artwork so that your work is easily noticeable. A black background color is perfect for this silver jewelry, for example. Think about the background color for the walls as well as the background color on table on the tables. What makes your products most noticeable? So once you've put your booth all together, the final step is to take a step back from your booth. Go ahead and walk outside of your booth, walk away a little bit, and then approach your booth again. Ask yourself, does the booth look tidy? Does the booth display look full? Could you put out some more products? Where are your promotional materials? Are they easy for buyers to ask, access? Will customers want a mirror to try on products? Can buyers see your story easily? Now let's look at a few booths and see if there's anything you might have done differently. What do you think about this booth? What would you suggest changing? If you guessed picking the, moving the large baskets off the floor, I think you're right. I would love to see these large baskets hung on that back wall to really create a very dramatic statement. They represent so many different patterns and their so size and scale would be easily noticeable to customers who are passing by. With these baskets on the floor, they won't be noticed by customers once three or four people enter into the booth. Is there anything that you might do differently in this display? How could we help improve this booth? To my eyes, this back wall is quite empty. It would be great to have shelves on the back wall, larger shelves, and have a nice display of a selection of the glasswork to create a statement display of their work. It would also be nice to have shelves or risers throughout the booth to have a variety of heights more consistently. Another idea is that they could group their products by function or by shape. For example, having all the tall vases in one area, having all the glassware in another area, having all the figurines with another grouping. The product groupings would make it easier for customers to see the selection of products that are available. Remember, during the market, keep restocking your display. When a customer buys the product, it will leave your booth immediately. Don't put products on hold or hold products in your booth for customers. If they wanna purchase it, they need to purchase it right then on the spot and take it away with them. Watch what products are attracting the most attention. Don't be afraid to move things around in your booth to make sure your most popular items are highly visible. Feel free to change your product, change your booth display during the market. 
as you move throughout the market and people are maybe less interested in your large signature pieces, maybe you need to bring some smaller, less expensive items to the front of the booth so they're easily accessible to buyers. Just to summarize, here are four steps to planning your booth. First, decide where to place your tables so that buyers can easily walk through your booth and see and touch your products. Two, identify your signature pieces that rep best represent you and your work. Three, organize your products into groupings by either color, size, materials, function, or motifs. Four, start with the back wall to create an eye-catching display. We have provided this worksheet it starts off with a summary of this presentation. And then here is this worksheet area where you can make a sketch of your booth display. Use this worksheet to create a plan for your booth before you arrive at the market. Being prepared before you arrive will help you put together your booth with ease and success. It will also help you communicate your booth display plan to anyone who might be helping you during setup. And it will help you plan ahead for any display items, such as materials to make shelves, or extra boxes to make risers, or extra textiles to use as a backdrop in a contrasting color. We hope this presentation helped answer your questions about what comes with your booth and how to plan a booth display to share the beauty and uniqueness of your folk art and increase sales. Thank you.